We want to continue with this conversation uh, from the survey, the Time Use Survey, and the report was released recently. The survey was conducted by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics with collaboration with the State Department for Gender and Affirmative Action, uh, Oxfam International Kenya, UN Women, and support from the World Bank, and it has several things that it says. For example, uh, it categorizes work in ways, in productive, how you spend your time productively, two ways. One is the, what we call the tier one production, where you're paid to do something or you go out there and you're producing food for consumption. Then there's the other side of production, which is unpaid, unpaid care, unpaid domestic work and such. And then, of course, there's the what they categorize as unproductive. And then productive would include your rest time, the time you're spending, socializing and such. And then there's also education. Now, when you talk about now these two broad categories of productive hours, women spend three hours, 36 minutes more on unpaid care and domestic work than men. Uh, it also shows that working women, those are now also working in the first category. They go out to get paid for the work that they do. They still spend three hours, 18 minutes more on unpaid care and domestic work than working men. Uh, men spend two hours, 36 minutes more on that paid care category compared to women, 3.3 hours in a day. Women spend about three hours, 42 minutes more on those non SNA productive activities. This is what we're calling, uh, talking about there, unpaid care and domestic work compared to men, one hour. This conversation continues. We still have Maureen Otieno, who's a gender, justice, and women rights strategist from Oxfam, Oxfam International, Kenya. In the previous hour, we had Oganga Carnobel, who's program specialist, gender statistics advisor at UN Women. He stepped aside. We now welcome onto the show Stanley Wambua. Stanley is head of gender and statistics at the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. Stanley, good morning. Good morning, Latif. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome to the hot seat of the situation room. Thank you. It was made pro properly warm by Oganga was, as you were <laughs> sure, out there. Sure, sure. City has the day's proverb. This week's proverbs are from the Republic of Rwanda. Today's mm. proverb, City. If you shake a dog, you shake its owner. If you shake a dog, you shake its owner. Maureen has already given us her interpretation of this. Mm. So now it's up to you, Stanley. What's yours? Okay. Rwanda. I, I guess Rwandese also speak Kiswahili, mm. so therefore mm. I will first think in my mother tongue, Kiswahili and then English, mm. but it will translate to the same. Mm -hmm. In Kiswahili we say Piga umba ujue mwanyewe. It's the same, same saying. Mm. You said shake a dog. You will know the owner. You, you, shake, the you owner. shake the owner. If you, you shake will a be dog. shaky the owner. Yes. Mm. Good. And I think that one has a lot of application in the, the main subject of today's discussion. Uh, one, in my understanding, is what comes to the fore is the relationship between the owner and the dog. Mm -hmm. Now, dogs, scientifically, it's a bigger family. Mm -hmm. We have wild dogs. Mm -hmm. If you shake a wild dog, you will not know the owner. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because there is no strong relationship. Maybe except the conserv uh, conservationist. Mm -hmm. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. So you shake the domestic one, I'll be with you. You shake the wild one, I'll be with you. Mm. So that relationship is built over time. It must have a cultural background. Mm -hmm. Alright? And therefore, the shaking of a dog will be interpreted by the owner is harm mm. and therefore the owner will respond mm. just the same way organs of the same body when you when you injure at all the eyes will start shedding tears <laughs> they are feeling the same pain mm. now closer to the main business which brings us here about domestic and paid domestic and care work at the family level my personal projection and i believe also that is also the direction government is taking, mm. is that, and my colleagues, I think they had alluded to this, 
the imbalance in, term, in terms of unpaid domestic and care work. Within the same family, although we take, 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 take the, the line of dog, in that name, but mm. in light touch, mm. that occasionally elsewhere we normally use donkey work, mm. to mean so-and-so so -and -so is doing a lot of unpaid stuff, eh? yeah. which is possibly injurious to their personal development. And it happens in the, in the context of a household or a family then all the members of the family should feel it, mm. right? Mm. And redistribute, right? The arts, this Madame burden. was saying, mm. redistribute the burden mm. so that the, the, the totality, the all, is comfortable and have equal opportunities for development. Lessen the burden. Lessen the burden. Lest the donkey talks to Balaam. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Be responsive. Mm. You know, be responsive. You've given very serious meaning to this proverb and you've actually expanded it very well to fit into the discussion we're having today. You know, the. let me ask this question. When we look at this gross inequality that is being presented here, is it that our social norms and our understanding of it changed over time? Or did we very quickly accept and absorb, imitate, and mimic certain foreign and Western values so that when we look at those values against our own values, the, the, the light that is being shown seems to be somehow incongruent. And perhaps the light we're shining on it is more of a Western light than what we traditionally call an African light. Or what we consider to be the norms in African setting are so eroded that we can't even recognize it anymore. Okay. I, I'll give it a go in two ways. Uh, one, when, when I think when I was introduced, I was introduced by name and maybe by job title. Mm -hmm. But let me say that uh, where I work, the role of the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics is to provide you or this country or our users with the credible data, statistical information for various purposes. That is our business. Now, when, when we talk about data or statistics, actually those are numerical representation of facts. Mm. Now, a fact is a fact. Mm. What draws in uh, narratives which may differ from different perspectives is the interpretation and what you do with those facts, mm. how they are presented. Mm. There is actually no, I wouldn't expect there to be a, any challenge with the figures because these are representing what happens, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What is there on the ground? Mm -hmm. But it's now us, what do we do with it? Now from government side and I think government side and uh, Oxfam is the same. These are the facts they have been put on the table. You have seen the imbalance. When it comes to uh, unpaid domestic and care work, you find that women are spending almost four times the time men spend on the same category of work. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Almost four times. Yep. Almost across the board, be they the boys or the elderly. Yeah. You find it's direct there. But then there is that talk of now are we assassinating our culture and uh, picking other people's culture and replacing it? Those are interpretation and application. But I'll give you, for example, like a, now the second part of the, the analogy. What I would recommend, now that we have documented, mm. and the documentation is, I would say documentation is the first step of the first R, recognition. You can't recognize something you don't know. Mm. So you document first. So this point going forward, you have the figures, you know where it is, the level. Then now you recognize and accept performing unpaid uh, domestic and care work is work. All right? Yes. And especially so, uh, the category we are calling, uh, the major division three and four, mm. what we are calling uh, non SNA, mm. you know, category, those two categories. Mm. Why? When you look at it, in terms of the opportunity cost, right? It would cost you money mm. if she didn't do or if we didn't do. Yeah. It would cost you money. Yeah. 
If I choose to be the watchman of the family, you sleep, I'll stay outside. Mm. If I don't, I'm staying outside maybe for, I'll give you an example. Eh? You see now the men, eh? mm. Maureen is here, I think, eh? I think you should also be gracious enough at some point also to use such examples. I also revert the other side. Mm -hmm. If, for example, in a family setup, there is a physical challenge to the security of the family, I would expect uh, if it's a household, Latif, Vakabuti, it is my responsibility. Get the panga, mm. become the watchman, go to the gate. Mm. And don't come and demand a salary. Eh? Mm. So when you are doing it, I know there is cultural background which we expect you to do it and not your wife. But when you are doing it, it's a contribution you are making. Yeah. Then why not recognize it? The same way, if your wife is cooking for the family, do all everything. Mm. Why do we struggle to accept it? If but she doesn't do it, somebody else will do it and you pay. Ombua. Yes. What is this recognition? Okay, rec recognition, I think uh, I've given it a... Uh, uh, Three aspects. One, document to know the magnitude. If there was gender parity in it, we would not be talking about it now. Mm -hmm. All right? But there is so much skew against one sex. Mm -hmm. That's why we are talking about it. The second one is recognition means, now the third aspect of it, within an economy like Kenya, accepting to value it and accept to be a contribution to the GDP. Value it in what terms? Mm -hmm. In, in monetary, monetary terms. terms? Monetary yes. terms. Okay. And, and, and allow it to be mm. aggregated in the GDP. If by some other logic, either because of international standards, mm. that one does not result that way, mm. then plan B of it is to develop a set satellite account mm. of household contributions to the GDP. Mm. Okay. Side by side. So that we highlight it and it's feasible mm. and it's being seen. Thank you. I want to understand the recognition a little bit more uh, because we talk about recognition and we say recognize it then in compensatory measure, right? Mm. So that it is adding to the GDP. Um, how then does that translate directly to the individual who may be carrying this out where they've been recognized mm. on either side? How do we see that and say, okay, beyond me saying, all right, uh, I've recognized that you have played your role physically. As Recognition security. should be followed by reward. Uh -huh. So now how do we see this reward play <laughs> out benefits. physically? Is that M-Pesa <laughs> comes <laughs> from government <laughs> or what? How? Or Oxfam. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody gets on a monthly basis because we know you're doing four hours kind of thing. You know, and because that's the question. Mm -hmm. Because I can recognize you by word of mouth. I say, you know, fantastic job, Eric. I know that you're doing that thing. Well done. Or every Labor Day, the president comes out and he says, yes, everybody, I know that you do one, two, three, but we're saying that it or should Mother's go, Day, or Mother, or Women's Day, yeah. say. but we're saying it should go beyond that, <laughs> right? So, how does that play out, and where does this money come from? It may sound like a dumb question, but mm. how then do you say that it's been recognized, and then how are we recognized equally? Because mm. maybe I carried 10 jerry cans of water and you sat with the baby. Mm -hmm. How then do you measure and say this amount of shilling dollar is enough mm -hmm. for what you've done? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. That's mm. a very, very good question. And this is where we start off by also laying this foundational understanding is that when you talk about recognition, we're not looking at it as recognition where maybe women or the country is expected to pay a woman. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's not let's now move away from that. That's not the understanding that is there. Mm -hmm. But what we need to understand also is unpaid care and domestic work, recognizing the role women are playing in subsidizing this economy mm -hmm. is a social good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Isn't it? Yes, we start it is. by saying we agree it's a social good, isn't it? Yes. As he rightfully put that the value of this woman over the years is more pronounced when you're older you have your own family that's when you feel the weight of truly that my mother did play a significant role in my life isn't mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so from that i think i married that and say that it is a social good okay right so that is recognition mm -hmm. at its very beginning okay. that you understand it is a social good mm -hmm. and this is actually work and i'm right? saying that currently that recognition doesn't exist so that's the recognition is not appreciated because in most cases you will find out and that's why the statistics as you said have come out as the first 
first first baseline for us to really say this is a statistical product yeah. that mm -hmm. demonstrates that these are the hours that are there so that as Bombua has mentioned we need to now go to the next phase so you asked a very important question is is has that not been appreciated mm. so it is now the reason why we went into this particular stream of work is to present the data that helps us see the numbers so that we can now go into the next step and talk about the whole conversation on reduction mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. when we talk about reduction again we ask ourselves is it fair for instance for a girl in marsabi to spend two hours looking for water isn't it we mm -hmm. all understand that we came up from the worst drought situation in decades yeah. right while at that point her brother is having that opportunity maybe to go to study isn't it mm -hmm. so she had two hours or the where brother has traveled with his elder siblings 75 kilometers away looking for pasture possible for livestock. exactly so there are also those dynamics mm -hmm. that we need to consider so we find out that in reducing the two hours that they spend through different uh, approaches could be maybe case essential infrastructure mm -hmm. government ex uh, i mean um, reducing some of that through infrastructural developments mm -hmm. we are actually talking about reducing and recognizing care work as work okay. and reducing that so when we talk about redistribution i want to come back to the home nobody everybody is happy whether you're a man or a woman taking care of your ch young ones isn't it yes. you're happy taking care mm. of someone who's unwell yep. isn't it yep. and that is just a simple element of redistribution because it's not as much as a monetary component all right mm. but it's just understanding that it is a task that mm. anybody can assume and you asked us so how are we going to monetary how are we going to put a monetary value to this mm. um as wambua had mentioned before and cannibal had mentioned before is that we we'll also need to understand that as they subsidize the economy there should be a metrics to measure that work so that it is put in the national statistics account and that is actually now further seen as a contribution to this economy but yes the second part i see it and in fact that's what one way you had said when we now have this data how does this come into government and decision making and policy all right mm -hmm. in terms of saying uh, what's the contribution of these people who, who we were not recognizing before as contributing. So we're looking at those who are in paid employment. We talk about employment creation. What are we talking about? We talk about those who, people who are gainfully employed. Does gainfully employed only mean you're gainfully employed because you paid a salary? Does employment also mean other things? Those ones I see. While I'm having a problem is when we talk about, you know, when we bring in the whole issue of redistribute so that then genders can have balance, you know, equal participation in all chores in the society and i'm like why do we have to look at it that way why do we have to look at it that way that you know because this young boy has go to it's been a hot season go to the asal areas in kajedo and elsewhere you'll find young boys who are hundreds of kilometers away from their home with emaciated livestock looking for pasture and water Okay, those young boys should. When we talk about redistribution, are we saying that move that boy, bring the sister? Because <laughs> that's what we say. It's, it sounds like that's what, because we are saying that let, the, the woman has been a housewife. Well, let's also encourage men to be house husbands. I just don't see the sense of that. I think you've brought up a good question. And mm. what we, I think, that needs to come out clearly is that one is that redistribution actually means that men also recognize that essentially this this um care responsibilities and taking care of for example children mm. all right is work and the ask is just to support it's not mm. uh, it's just to support Where let me finish from? Yes. let me ask you just finish it's just to support each other all right allowing us and allowing women to free up more time to take up more paid work so there's one thing i also want to put it across there is unpaid care and domestic work all right there is unpaid care work 
there is paid care work, yes. right? And there is domestic work. That yes. is where we should have started from. Yes. There is unpaid care work, which goes around. Of course, you've seen some of the activities, cooking, cleaning, and the likes, isn't it? Mm. Then there is paid care works where you talk, you mentioned that we actually remunerate um, some of our domestic managers yes. in our home, isn't it? Yes. Then, of course, there is a whole conversation on domestic work. So the idea of this conversation is not really to push for a full blown um, conversation around um, gender, roles. This, uh, gender roles, you see, but it's more of support. All right. So that women can gain, can also participate in gainful paid work. And that's why Oxfam's actually strategy and perspective when it talks about uh, women's work is they talk about women's agency is increased to participate in public and private life. I all right. You. Yes. So Maureen. it's all about support. Maureen, how about Oxfam? Yes. Stops looking at things from that lens Excellent. of you are only considered to be productive when you are paid for it. That is how about Oxfam stops looking at it that mm -hmm. way? Because we don't. Mm -hmm. We consider everybody who's contributing to in this family as contributing we recognize the contribution mm -hmm. those that are paid and they come and they're able to help us foot the bills those that are not paid but they are helping us not foot the bills by bringing somebody to do the work that they do we recognize it oxfam doesn't that's why oxfam wants this person who spends the day at home and they're not getting paid to get time to go and get paid that's a very good question because it is Oxfam no, that you it's, just it's not <laughs> recognize that I this like person that. is recognized. I like that. So what I want to highlight is that it's not an Oxfam conversation. I know. I'm just because saying. when you look at it under Sustainable Development Goals Five, yeah. we talk about achieving gender equality, mm. isn't it? Yes. And this stream of work with the Kenya Time You Survey, the stream of work that we are leading in this country, advancing decent work, is feeding into achieving gender equality. It is a national, global conversation. And when you look at SDG 5.1 that looks further into unpaid care and domestic work, it's actually calling upon nations. You see, it's not a Cox from conversation. Mm. It's a global conversation that is asking nations, let us recognize, right. Mm. all right, mm. unpaid care and domestic work. And input and actually look at the statistics KNBS has really supported us with mm. to use the statistics in social protection mechanisms mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. use those statistics to actually um, improve in our country as nationally that's appropriate true. That's true. so it's not one thing we need to put out there is that it's a conversation around us uh, really um achieving gender equality mm -hmm. and let's not and also look at it it's a, and not also not also not look at it mm. as a men conversation okay. it is a social good i just want as we go to a break yes. okay let, let me let me apologize to Oxfam. <laughs> I, it may have come out the way it was not intended. It's, it's not saying that Oxfam is pushing this, you know, agenda and all of it. I was just using that, you know, figure because you're here. Eric, Oxfam is just pushing that agenda. <laughs> and it's a good agenda. <laughs> it's a good agenda. I was just saying that Oxfam should has a single lens. No, no, no. It's the international development community in general. Okay. Oxfam included. Maybe they're the ones that should be looking at it from a different lens. I stand with that. Take a break, 28 minutes to nine. Kenya's biggest conversation is having a, we're talking about the time use survey that was conducted by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, um, working with Oxfam International Kenya, UN Women, the State Department for Gender and Affirmative Action, supported by the World Bank, and the results of it. That's what we're discussing. Stanley Wambua is the head of the gender and statistics at the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, and Maureen Otiano is a gender, justice, and women rights strategist at Oxfam International Kenya. We'll be back shortly. Spice. Use survey. I know, Stanley, you wanted to yeah. respond to something before CT asks the next question. Yeah, th thank you very much. I think, uh, let, let me cast a certain perspective about gender equality. Yes. And bring it home to Kenya so that we see the three levels. Uh, I think what unsettles maybe many people, especially in developing countries, mm. developing countries are, are, are conservative in terms of their yeah, culture. And therefore, anything which seems to be coming from outside will be resisted. 
I like resistance. Resistance is natural. Mm. You must understand, first of all, the change that is being introduced to you, whether it's beneficial or not. Mm. So my beef with our cultures, because I believe the process of colonization, and to some extent, Christianization, the religion, really upset a certain balance, and therefore there was, there was no gradual change, which is systematic. For example, and then you find, for example, like in African cultures, uh, we, 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 we take too long to review things that are maybe not working. Mm. Mm. We tend to be a bit more conservative. And I think that's where the rain starts beating us. Now, my view of it is this. Gender equality is good and very sweet. Mm. It increases productivity. There is a lot we lose when one half is not performing. At the family level, at the national level, even internationally, right? And what I would like to spot so that we put perspective and objectivity in these uh, discussions, not necessarily in this studio, but everywhere in Kenya, mm. is we look at gender equality in a way that, for example, we reduce discrimination, all right? Mm. We reduce oppression. If a culture is oppressive, to a segment of its society, then those bits need to be amended and improved so that everybody has equal opportunities to enjoy life. And then they contribute. Going forward now, revert it back to the figures. You have the figures. Everybody now have, has the figures. We'll be looking at them and doing further analysis and we'd like to encourage further research. For example, you'll find the aggregates that we are giving, which are national, or which are slightly global in, um, in terms of the way we have rendered them. Like, for example, when we say, uh, let me pick the case of uh, a children 15 to 19 years, mm. you find, for example, like women or stroke girls, they spend 15% of their time on domestic and care work, which mm. is unpaid. Mm. They are, 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 are counterparts, boys, men, they spend 4.2, which is about one hour. You see that difference? Mm. Let's come to the orderly, 65 plus. You find that 12% of, uh, I mean, women spend 12% of their time on uh, unpaid domestic and care work. Mm. That is two hours, almost three hours. Back here, six minutes to be, to be six hours. Mm. For the men, it's slightly less than one hour. Now, when we put the other variables of context in research and further analysis, and then we ask ourselves, because here we are not pairing spouses. Eh? Mm -hmm. No, no, okay. no. These are men, wherever mm. they were found. We yes. are pairing spouses. Mm -hmm. If we go deeper in analysis and we also do the same, but now focusing on the household, mm -hmm. spouses, eh? mm. you will see similar you know, figures. Okay. Now the question is, a, a, let's say wife. That's the, the term we use for a wife, for a, for a female spouse, mm. that she is spending three hours on a domestic and pay domestic and care work. The man is, pay, is spending less than an hour on the same. Mm. Mm. So where does he spend the rest of that's, the hours? That's the question. Now on he, the SNA. They go to the SNA. Yes. I, just all in the narrative. Mm -hmm. Then, for whose benefit is, is this man in that SNA? Does the woman benefit from it? Now, let me not say it. Mm. Let such say it. Okay. Now, the, 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 the unpaid care and domestic work the woman is doing, mm. who is benefiting from it? So that when we program, we do not necessarily put the two sexes in conflict or in a fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a better understanding of it. We'll put it in a manner. And again, the, the five arts that were, my colleagues did uh, uh, tackle previously, they are all important because one gives to the other. Mm. Like when we say, for example, we begin by recognizing you know, if you don't recognize, we will never move from that point. Mm. Then you reduce. We are putting the responsibility to reduce to the state, plus the household themselves. It's not the state alone. Then our partners, Oxfam and the others, they are just being, uh, being what? Awareness creators. Mm. Keeping the conversation going. And that is very important. Then from there, we are saying redistribution. Redistribution can occur at at family level, mm. that's where it is. But we persuade the people. Sometimes when you put legislation that says, no, if, if madame goes for work, the man must also take turn, mm. you will put the sexes in conflict. Mm. 
Mm. And again, that has also other undesirable byproducts. Then the reward. The element of reward, let me spend some time on it. Reward, uh, there is the bit which is the softer one, the one Madame Du mm. said. It is not enough we set us aside that day for women. We come and praise you, mm. but at the end of the day she feels ultimately it's not translated to anything other than, but it's still a positive point that we have recognized. Mm. The reward aspect can come in different affirmative programs. Mm. I'm glad that the, the policy on unpaid domestic and care work is in the process. Mm -hmm. Government has started, we have not finished. It's definitely going to be enriched by these statistics. And we are saying that, I want to give an example. The state, and this is only that we are, because we are poor, if we had resources, mm -hmm. the state should actually own children. And we say, oh, children belong to the state. Mm. They must go to school, they must be attended. The elderly are ours. They belong to the state. And then we say, if let's say a family member is taking care of an elderly person mm. who is care dependent, then we can give, if we are able to afford, we can give a monetary compensation to that caregiver. Mm. It can happen. All right? But again, do we have the resources to go that way? But that one is premised on an argument that at that level, responsibility lies with the state and also with the household. Mm. Mr. Right? Mbua, sorry, you left us hanging. Yeah. Just um, there's something that you said, maybe we can land it so that we can get a full understanding. Yeah. So you said that women, according to this research, are spending about six hours in this unpaid um, care work. Care work. Mm. And men are spending about one hour. Now, these are people all over the place. We're not necessarily putting them in the same household. Yeah. Right? Mm. You also said that in this unpaid care work, the beneficiaries, rather, or the, those who receive this contribution, you can see that they receive it from um, women. That There are others who then are beneficiaries of this work that these women do. Mm, correct. But now, the men who are engaged in SNA who are then not engaged in this homework, you didn't finish by telling oh, oh, us okay. who benefits from oh, this okay, 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 yeah. um, mm. SNA contribution. Yes, I will end up. Okay, okay, thank you. If women are contributing to many people, <laughs> yeah. where does this work that they're doing then go? Okay, mm. uh, let me correct something. Uh, I, the statistics I had given was that 15, among girls, 15 to 19 years. Mm. Mm. They spend 15% of their time on, on unpaid domestic and care work, translating to three hours. Mm. The counterpart, the male ones, is one hour. Mm -hmm. When you go to the elderly, 65 years plus, you find that the women spend 12%, which is, a, is actually two hours. I beg your pardon. Let me check that. For the girls, it's three and a half hours because three, hour, three hours and 36 minutes. Those mm -hmm. are three and a half hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the boys is one hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the elderly, the women is almost three hours because mm -hmm. that's two hours and 54 minutes. Mm. On average, that's approximately three hours. Mm. For the men, it's 48 minutes, which is less than an hour. Mm -hmm. And then I was saying, the analysis, here we are not pairing spouses. Mm -hmm. True. Mm -hmm. We are dealing with aggregates for men. Yes. And aggregates for women. Yes. Mm. And I was advocating, for example, like, and we did say it, this is, in our next steps, further analysis is necessary. Mm. When you go and, for example, like, look at the analysis between spouses, mm -hmm. right? And then we say, you find the, the female adult in the household has done this much and paid care work mm. within that environment of a household or a family. Mm -hmm. who is benefiting from the labor of this woman who is mm -hmm. not paid? Mm -hmm. It is the members of the members family, of the members family, of family and the household. Right. And then I asked, mm. the man spent less than an hour mm. or thereabouts, one hour thereabouts. Yeah. Yeah. Where did he spend the rest of his Time. hours? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we said, you will find it is now compensated on the other side on the SNA. Yes. yes. Which is, especially SNA, Major Division 1 and 2, which is paid. Yes. yes. Who benefits from uh, the paid work, this, this paid paid work, work. by this person yes. in that family? Mm. 
to pay fees, to buy food, to buy this and this. Mm. So when we are, we are looking at it in terms of, is there somebody oppressed mm -hmm. where you are giving labor for free and you are not benefiting in any way? Mm -hmm. yeah. It is further analysis which can answer that one, not the statistics that we have now. But then for us to be able to take this conversation in a manner that does not... You see, when you unsettle the cultural standard, yeah. mm. people become resistant. Yeah. Mm. All right? And then it takes you longer to achieve gender equality. So we are saying, and I don't mind coming this, <laughs> this studio as many times as possible, uh, even at individual level, mm. we need to give the, the spice aspects of gender equality <laughs> so <laughs> that we minimize the resistance. I think it's absolutely then, necessary. That question that you haven't asked, the analysis that you haven't performed, the family that benefits one, yes. from the SNA mm. earnings of the man. So mm. then you have and created, vice versa mm. applies. So you've right. created equilibrium then, have you not? There's still not yet equilibrium because of there are other aspects which are not here. Okay. Can I say them? Yes. yes. Traditional cultural beliefs. I wish this one was in Kiswahili. Maybe it'll be appearing later in Kiswahili. Same Kiswahili. Kiswahili. The traditional one. Mwenyezi mungu aliumba binadamu wakiwa variety mbili, aina mbili, ama tabaka mbili. Wanaume na wanawake. Na akawatafautisha kwa mwili peke yake. Dhambi ilipo ingia, the equation changed. Initially, they were equal. They didn't have a problem. Mm. They were complementing each other at 50-50. Perfect. Then curses came in. Mm. <laughs> so every, every one of them was... Yeah, I, mm. I was listening when Madame was beginning when to say where we are saying. If you want to understand where we are, dig our history. Mm. Religion. Mwanaume mm. aliambiwa nini? Right. For you have listened to your wife and you have disobeyed. So God pronounced for him, you shall eat by your sweat. <laughs> mm -hmm. The land is cast for you. For you are entired until you rudi mavumbini. Mm. Utakula kwa? Just Na nimelaani harithi? Itafanya nini? Ita resist. Itamea michongoma <laughs> ya kukuadhibu mm. as you sweat for that to feed your family. Mm. It comes to the woman and it tells the woman and sometimes they normally don't finish the sentence. Mm. And you woman, because you did this, you are to the snake and blah, 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 all that. You will conceive by, I will increase your labor pains. Is mm. it still happening today? Mm -hmm. So the religious perspective says perfectly that it is. It has never changed. Even Jesus was unable to remove that. Mm. Then the next thing is, many people normally end it there, but there's a sentence which goes on. Mm -hmm. And in your entirety of your life, utafanya nini? Maisha yako yatakuwa na matamanyo ya mumu yako na yatakutawala. You see the imbalance? Mm. So from a religious perspective, it started off that way. Then we say... That you should now become it lesser. It created dominion. Yes. Isn't it? You shall be now submissive once the dominion to... is abused, then the issues of oppression, discrimination comes in. But is it necessary... For people who are living together, those are the possible aspects of gender equality. We are saying that then the assumptions, it's not correct. For example, in our societies, like if I provide for my family, mm. I provide for my wife, our needs, mm. I'm driving. So, Madam, what do you need? I, she needs a car. So I buy her a car. Mm. And the car is registered in my name. Mm -hmm. Right? So <laughs> it's a need I've responded to. Yeah. But she would like it to own it. Mm. That's another aspect. Why? For personal fulfillment. Mm. You need land for what? Oh, I buy you the land. Oh, and I take a new bagor offer. Ah, I construct it for you. So you find element moja ya matamanio yake, haifiki, she's not feeling a full human being. Mm. Let it be. All right? Mm -hmm. Let it be. That's what we are saying. Let it be. Mm -hmm. If she wants to own, she has the means, or we can participate together. There's nothing wrong with it. So you find that the cultural aspect of it as we move forward becomes an issue. Then you look at our tradition, the traditional societies. It affects migration. The big elephant in the room is urbanization. Urbanization kills the village ecosystem. Yeah. So you can just leave your family where you come from in Kwale. You are, you are a young girl. You've got a job in Nairobi. Mm. 
I mean, you just come and look for house where you are, you can pay and you leave. Who, who, who interacts with you is your business, isn't it? Mm -hmm. In the traditional one, it was never like that. When I was growing, oh, you find any, any girl around, it's towards maybe evening, we escort them to their home. And we go back. We are, we are feeling she'll be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Does it happen in our urban setup? No. They go wherever they want, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because there's, there's a change which is with us. But then, when it comes again to gender equality, we say, uh, let's have a balance where we don't create more conflict mm -hmm. than in And yeah. I think... I, I think that, that, that's my take on this. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also Zombo has rightfully put, uh, one of the things we also want to understand is that uh, when we talk about care work and what the statistics offer us is that when we talk about redistribution, redistribution should not only be seen from the home. It is a government responsibility, exactly. mm. isn't it? Mm. When an ECD is built in satellite, an ECD is built in Gomongo somewhere in Nairobi, yep. young women can actually take their children to school, isn't it? Yes. At times you find there's a school feeding program. You've seen a lot of school feeding programs, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The nutrition component is actually looked at for our children. But what we need to understand is that redistribution is a, is, a, is a government responsibility as well. It's not only a household responsibility. Mm -hmm. And secondly, also in terms of social norms and culture, one of the things we need to appreciate is that care work is visible to us as elites in Oxfam, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But it remains invisible to a lot of us in society. Mm -hmm. And these numbers here have presented that invisibility by giving us a statistical product across 47 counties. The question is, what do we do with this information? Because it also has to go through further analysis. And one thing we need to also appreciate is that when we talk about representation, these women who are represented here in this statistical product also now require to have that voice to say, what is the impact of them having mm -hmm. not being not having those hours or losing those hours it's a journey that is both having it's a transformative journey mm -hmm. all right that has requires both men and women because when we talk about gender transformativeness it's about having men and women as equal agents of change yeah. mm -hmm. and secondly also is to mention that oxfam is also happy to be part of this history i mean in a country because it's about a social norms change it's about mm -hmm. us making it as african as kenyan relative kenyanized and uh, relevant to the Kenyan context with indigenous solutions. Mm. You know, when we look at this conversation and we look at the concept of reward, the analysis, the statistics with regards to the value addition, is there a place for the simple satisfaction that you are doing something you ought to do well? You see, I talked about social capital. Financial capital seems to be what we focus on. Mm. And cultural capital comes in as a matter of conversation. And yet, all these, apart from that, we think the financial capital is what can be monetized. All of them have a monetary value. Yeah. All. Yeah. And some people, and this is where now the issue of roles came in, when they've been disrupted, then that conversation changes completely. But the mere fact that someone had a role which they fulfilled, that in itself, I would argue, as a quantification that I'm asking, is that considered? I like what you said, and I also want us to ask ourselves. You used the word ought to do. Mm. So... Again, we sit here and we need to understand that gender is a social construct. It is a role that has been prescribed by religion, tradition, mm. culture. So, in essence, it's not that you ought to do it, mm. isn't it? It's not because cast in stone. it's not cast in stone, because it's a it's a role you have assumed because you have been taught to assume that role. If we had this conversation anywhere outside of this country. It would have been perfectly normal for some of the things that seemingly mm. in this conversation seem to be foreign. Mm. All right. So gender is a social construct. It's a socially learned behavior, socially learned role. So can we unlearn some things so that we can support each other? 
is the question. Mm -hmm. Can we learn new ways to, to support in terms of how we want to look at care work? That's also a different conversation because the ask here is for us to really look at how can we come together and appreciate and ask ourselves and bring this conversation that care work is invisible, but both men and women have a role. So it's a right. joint conversation. Mm. And it's also not only women and men, but it's also a state obligation. Yes. Can we make okay. it visible? Yeah. Yes, we can. Right? Yeah. So, so when we say, so somebody does not feel unfulfilled yes. because they spent the last seven years doing care work mm -hmm. and therefore they are looking to balance this and to get fulfillment in their life by actually now going to care work and so the push is okay so i've done this for the last two years the kids are now two years old now let me go and work you now come here for the next four years as they go into kindergarten so that that doesn't have to be the push and pull for all of us whether it's a man who's been the house husband for the last for the yes. first two years or That's vice versa yeah. so if we can equate the same value as money for category one and two, those who are getting paid in offices, those who are getting uh, an income from production of food and whatever, and the same, same value as care work, then you'd feel I am doing something. It is a, a contribution. There's a value to it. Exactly. Correct. And I am productive. Correct. Exactly. How do we get there uh, then? Let, 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 let me give it a first go. Mm. In about 30 seconds as we conclude. Uh, yeah, very fast. Eh? The the recognition in terms of numbers will be represented by a satellite account, mm. right? <coughs> satellite account. Mm. It will magnify that. And then the other thing is, uh, which you have said, is that uh, in the re in the, in the R for reducing uh, whatever the burden, mm. it frees time so that men and women who are in unpaid care and domestic work mm. can also engage in SNS, mm. which are paid. Paid. Yes. Okay. But we thank you very much for joining us both and also for Ogenga Kanobel, who is out there but has been following the conversation at Santeni Sano. We've been talking about the time use survey, some good work that done by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, as always, supported this time by Oxfam International Kenya, UN Women, the State Department for Gender and Affirmative Action, the World Bank, and our guest this morning, Maureen Otieno, Gender, Justice and Women Rights Strategist from Oxfam International Kenya, uh, Ogenga Kanobel from uh, UN Women, and Stanley Wambua, Head, Gender and Statistics, Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your...